Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Neil Water for Kit Guru. Uh, we don't really do unboxings on Kit Guru as such, but this is a preview, a preview of the new X399 Aorus Extreme motherboard from Gigabyte. X399, so Threadripper, and it supports the latest 32 core 2990 WX CPU. The significant thing about the new CPU, well, two of them is 24 core and 32 core. 24 core is not coming for six or eight weeks yet, is that if we take this board here, the X399 Aorus Gaming 7, uh, that is a board that will happily support your 180 watt TDP CPU. If you want to step up to the new 32 core, Gigabyte is providing you with this 250 watt uh, motherboard. So let's lift the lid, open the box, and take out this hefty, great big, genuinely heavy motherboard, along with accessory pack as such like and move that out of the way peel off this protective plastic off the IO peel off more plastic from the IO horrible noise and <laughs> I was warned about this. This is uh, comes straight from the engineering department at Gigabyte. It's missing one of the plastic retention clips for uh, one of the uh, memory dims. Uh, I was told because I thought, well, perhaps I can just simply replace a plastic clip. They said, no, no, to replace the clip, you actually have to replace the entire dim. It's a proper factory job. Ain't happening. So that is the hefty great motherboard. Let's just open the accessory pack before I go any further. See what's in here. Oh, surprising amount of stuff. The thing about the accessories here is that the move from the 180 watt TDP thread rippers to the 250 watt, the 180 watts are HEDT, head to high end desktop. Whereas the new 250 watts are. A different category. I mean, they're essentially workstation boards, um, but AMD is sort of stretching the definition of high end desktop to include this sort of uh, workstation territory uh, because it's the one socket that spreads across the whole gamut. I mean, you, are, you can still just about get the eight core entry level thread ripper, or you can go all the way up to the second gen uh, 32 core. It's a massive spread of hardware, uh, and that puts you in a slightly curious position. So, this board here realistically is a workstation board. Uh, there's another way of describing it. It's also bloody heavy. Uh, that's an EATX form factor. The Gaming 7 is ATX and is quite hefty, but by heft, it's lighter, admittedly. And that's actually with the CPU installed. So uh, there's a decent difference. Uh, and the reason this board feels so heavy is because it's got a lot of copper in it, uh, copper to shift the heat. Those accessories consist of an SLI bridge, a bunch of SATA cables, a couple of tools, one Torx, one Allen key, not entirely sure what they're for. Okay, we've got uh, M.2 cover going on, which is screw, 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 but those are Allen uh, Torx. I struggle to believe they're to do with the Threadripper socket, uh, but who knows, possibly so. RGB cable, RGB cable, M.2 fasteners, couple of thermocouples, Velcro straps, your usual manual, Wi-Fi antenna, more RGB. RGB of some sort, RGB going to uh, RGB extension perhaps, and then a Q connect, uh, a G connector. My mistake. Gigabyte calls it a G connector. That's one of those fellas where you connect your front panel uh, cables to that, and then you plug it in, plug it in to the uh, headers on the motherboard in one easy uh, move. It's clear that the Extreme is physically larger than the Gaming 7. That's EATX, that's ATX. You can see the extra width. You can see there's a bunch of extra components. But uh, it really does look as though the Extreme is just kind of stretched. So, for example, this uh, M.2 and chipset cover down here 
is physically larger. Uh, in other respects, it's not immediately apparent what's different, but the big difference is VRMs and uh, the power stages. On the Gaming 7, we've got the 8 Plus 2 setup. We've got some perfectly solid cooling, but it is that kind of solid aluminium cooling when I say solid cooling, albeit it's slitted and you can expect some air to flow through. But not, and if I hold like that, you can actually see fresh air through to the I.O. Uh, but it's it, it's solid rather than sophisticated. Uh, the other thing is if we go to the Ethernet side of things and as I say we're sort of on this cusp of is it high-end desktop or is it workstation we have single Ethernet and then when I go across to the extreme we've got uh, this uh, 10 plus 3 VRM setup Let's turn it around so you can see the CPU VRMs. Uh, we've got thinned heat sinks, we've got heat pipes connecting, and tucked away in there, I read on the spec, although I don't think I can see it. Oh, just, just on the edge through there, uh, I can see part of uh, one of the two 30 mil fans, which uh, force air to flow through the, uh, uh, heat exchanger and out and those fans are temperature controlled by a sensor on the VRMs. Touring around the board so we have the CPU VRM heatsink there, we've got either side of the CPU socket the eight DDR4 DIMMs, you can bet that those are going to be uh, RGB because this board's got a whole RGB thing going on, I'm quite certain of that. We have uh, eight pin connectors uh, at the top of the board there, I'm not sure whether it's uh, better to have those either side of the socket. be interesting to see how that performs. Uh, having said that, you can get a heck of a lot of juice through a single connector. Going down the side here, CPU fan, CPU optional, RGBW, which is very much a gigabyte thing. So not just RGB, but RGBW. And there we have what looks like a digital uh, RGB. We've got system fan stroke uh, pump, uh, 24 pin obviously, uh, we've got what well, look like they're the VRMs to do with memory, uh, in which case there's going to be more VRMs under there to do the memory as well as chipset. USB 3.1 Gen 2 for your front panel connection, THBC, not sure what that is. Looking forward to seeing. We have six uh, laid down SATAs and then we've got a six pin uh, should you want to feed more juice to your graphics. There we have front panel headers, debug, uh, USB 3.1 uh, Gen 1s, uh, more fan headers so that's a four pin for system fan, that's uh, syst uh, fan 5 is also for pump if you're uh, powering an actual D5 pump of that. USB 2s, flick switches for bias, That uh, those there are the bias and that probably means that that is, yeah okay so the secondary bias is socketed so if you here have a complete meltdown catastrophe you can prop B bias, that's the backup, looks like the main bias is socketed. Uh, bias switches there, LED TPM, LED, we don't, LED is TPM, trusted uh, trusted platform module. Okay, well that's fairly irrelevant. RGBW again, so we've got RGBW, RGBW, and then looks like digital RGB, digital RGB. D LED, I guess diagnostic LED, um, goodness knows what that is, perhaps that's one of the cables in the bag. Uh, header for front panel audio, caps for audio, and then we have the Aura's logo on the shielding over the I.O. Ordinarily, I'd be saying that shielding is a terrible idea because it's preventing airflow through the heatsink, but if we've got that pair of fans in there that allows you to draw air through, then uh, actually that's more like a duct rather than a cover, and that makes it a good thing. Just to reiterate, that clip or sort of plastic doohickey is missing that ought to be there. Turning to the I.O. So we've got the power button, clear CMOS, we've got a total of eight USB 3.0s if you prefer a USB 3.1 Gen 1s, the Ethernet port so that's two Intel Gigabit, 
uh, and one Aquantia 10 gigabit, the Aquantia being the red one that's labeled as such. USB 3.1 Gen 2 is a Type A and a Type C. Then we've got audio, the SPDIF out, and we've got the Wi Fi connections. Flipping the board over, it's got an extensive back plate which apparently has some sort of nano coating particle kind of thing which uh, helps heat transfer. If we look there, we can see there are indeed thermal pads. Uh, Gigabyte's information about this board includes lots of information about uh, the different kinds of thermal pads they've used. Seemingly they've got, uh, presumably, more expensive, better thermal pads that conduct heat better. Uh, the question obviously is how well it performs. In fact, that's pretty much all we're interested in. Just to finish off the front of the board, so we've got four PCI Express slots, but realistically multiple graphics cards in this day and age, it ain't gonna be. You'll be using one or possibly two, and that's all there is to it. As we know, Threadripper, 60 plus four lanes PCI Express, more PCI Express than you need for graphics and for storage. And then we have one, two, three M.2 slots. So overall, every single feature you might possibly want. It is entirely possible that Gigabyte has neglected some key feature from the X399 Aorus Extreme motherboard, but I have to say at first glance I cannot see it. It appears to be an all singing or dancing high-end motherboard. My only initial qualm about it is that it's EATX because in principle I prefer ATX because it fits more easily in most cases. On the other hand, if you have to have a bigger board because you've got so much hardware to accommodate, so be it, such is life. Everything I've seen so far without powering the board on looks highly promising, in particular the power hardware for the CPU, memory and chipset. That's all looking really good. The fact it has active cooling, also good. Until I turn it on, I won't know. It might be horribly noisy and hot as well. It might be beautifully cool and quiet. Fingers crossed for the latter. Uh, as for the pricing, yes, this board is more expensive than the uh, Gaming 7, uh, but on the other hand, you're getting 10 gigabit Ethernet and you're also getting the uh, enhanced power delivery system plus what looks like uh, a great deal of extra cooling. So in principle, the fact it's more expensive than the game is expensive. It's £450. Uh, that looks ominous. But then in a world where the 32 core processor is over £1,600, Hey ho, if you're allying this board to the 8 core entry level first gen Threadripper, well, that's a curious choice. As things stand, this board looks highly promising, so I'm going to crack on with a full review of it and see how it performs when it's used in anger. Right now, thumbs up and fingers crossed simultaneously. Yeah, like that, I guess. Uh, because I'm feeling optimistic about this and I really hope it doesn't let me down. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumbs down. If you want more from Kit Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button, we'll tell you about new videos as they become available. I'm Neil Warder for Kit Guru. This is the Gigabyte X399 Aorus Extreme.